This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. There's almost no difference in the numbers of divorces between those who say they're Christians and those who aren't. The church is doing more than ever to reach out to those who've been through a divorce, but the person who's the most unforgiving often is the person who went through the divorce in the first place. Mark Youngkin is a professor at Valor Christian College and wrote the book Make Like Lazarus, and he's got a real perspective on divorce and remarriage because, Mark, uh, your first marriage ended in divorce. It did. Uh, I was married at the age of uh, 24 mm -hmm. in July of 1984, and we were under the same roof for a little over 11 years. Uh, by the time all the legal rigmarole was, was over with, I was married for uh, 12 and a half years. Now, did you both go into that, into that relationship as, as Christians, thinking God's in the middle of this marriage, or was that kind of a supplementary thing in your, in your life? I was fairly newly saved at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, had, I was born again at a weekend retreat called the Walk to Emmaus in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. And later, the church that uh, we attended uh, began Emmaus weekends of, of mm -hmm. their own in Marysville. Uh, my, uh, my former wife uh, attended uh, her weekend in Cincinnati mm -hmm. before we were married, and we believed that we were starting out yeah. on a very solid well, it would seem like, yeah, when, you, when you're that excited, uh, I'm at the walk to Emmaus if people haven't, aren't familiar with it, but it, you'd come out of that weekend and be fired up and think, okay, God's going to do something in my life. I'm going to do something with God, and here's this new relationship that should be perfect. That was the idea, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's obviously the goal of every couple mm -hmm. that uh, gets married. But we had a lot of challenges. In retrospect, we probably shouldn't have gotten married in the first mm -hmm. place. Well, let, let's switch gears here. I mean, the divorce occurred. It happened. You're a believer. I just, you're giving up on the marriage. Do you give up on God at the same time, thinking, well, he didn't make this thing work. Where do I go with the Lord? The best decision I made at that point in my life, Bob, and I can't explain why I made this decision, I dived into the Word of God mm -hmm. uh, and also threw myself into my, my career did, as did, well. Okay, so, you're, you're, so you didn't feel like a failure. I absolutely knew that I had failed. You'd failed. But I was determined. But you weren't, you weren't dwelling in that failure. I was determined to come back from it okay. somehow, whatever okay. that meant. And if it meant that I would be single for the rest of my life at this point at the age of 36 or 37, mm -hmm. then I was willing to do that. Um, subconsciously, and what I tell people going through divorce today is that if you're going to enter into a new relationship, you better make sure that you're whole first. Right. Um, and not carrying a lot of the baggage from you. Yeah, when you go through a divorce, you, you're, you're broken, damaged, no matter how amicably mm -hmm. that supposedly plays sure. out. So it takes some time to recover mm -hmm. from that. I want to go back to something you said. You said you wouldn't have ministry if you were still in that other marriage. How does the church look on that? I mean, you're coming out of a church and, and we know that God hates divorce. I mean, he says that in his word. How do you get into ministry out of a divorce? I mean, how does the church look at that? I did a deep dive as part of my research for the book, into what God really says about divorce. And at the time, my concern was, can I remarry if it ever comes to that? Right. It turns out that there's two explicit uh, conditions where someone who is divorced can remarry. One is uh, if an unfaithful spouse strays not just once but as mm -hmm. a hi habitually as a right. as a lifestyle so if there's adultery or fornication involved and and that was that was jesus's term i believe it's in the gospel someplace and then paul adds if the unbelieving spouse chooses to leave you let them let them go and that was my situation uh, implicitly i believe that if someone is divorced before they become a believer, then it is permissible mm -hmm. to remarry. The sin uh, that it's un, under the, the grace of, of Christ. And I mean, just all of our sin comes under that. Under exactly. That Second Corinthians 5 and 17, we use in so many other contexts. Mm -hmm. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new, new creation, creation. Yeah. You're, which means that you're not this new, improved, whitewashed, you know, new coat of paint version of who you were before. You're somebody entirely mm -hmm. new. And eventually... 
uh, there, there was a new person in your life. Yeah, I mean, you said you were decided that if God wants me to remain single, I'll remain single, but apparently he didn't. Well, after a while, I started looking at, we didn't have Christian Mingle at the time. We didn't have eHarmony <laughs> at the time. Go online and what we had was the uh, personal ads in the Columbus Dispatch. Yeah. I remember that her ad said that she was looking for someone who had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So she just laid it right out there yeah. that that's exactly what she was looking for. About a month later, we, uh, we uh, went to dinner shortly after the 4th of July, and that was 21 years ago, and the rest is history. Two people I want you to speak to right now. One is the, the, the couples in the church, people in the church, families in the church, who see a, a, a couple going through divorce, or somebody who's been damaged by divorce, what can they do and say that uh, in some way is going to minister to their, to their brokenness? One of the things that, that was most hurtful when, when I was first divorced, first separated, is that there are so many people that feel like they have to choose sides. I've got to go with him or I've got to go with her and, you know, team A or team mm -hmm. B and never the twain shall meet. Divorced people are hurting. Acknowledging that there's hurting is probably the best thing that, that you can do. Some people, I would suggest particularly single parents, single mothers mm -hmm. at that time who were you know, try all of a sudden raising children yeah, alone, sure. might be the most vulnerable and I would be in particular. I would be particularly concerned with what needs can you meet. The, the other person I want you to address is that person who's gone through it. They're they're trying to get back into church. They, there's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of brokenness. We know how they feel. Uh, what would you say to them right now to encourage them? What I found at least was that people in the church were far more accepting of the fact that I was going through a thing than I was that I was going through a thing. It you know. Forgiveness is a big topic in the book, and, and, and you often need to forgive yourself, absolutely. In the book, Make Like Lazarus, A Biblical Perspective on Divorce and Remarriage, w tell me about the name real quick. <laughs> Make Like Lazarus. Lazarus wasn't divorced, was he? Lazar <laughs> not to my knowledge. <laughs> Lazarus was not divorced. Mm -hmm. He had more problems than that. He was, <laughs> yes, dead. He was dead. He was dead. I was reading that passage in John 11. Lazarus was not raised by his own strength. Lazarus was dependent on God and he was dependent on on others. And finally, importantly, uh, Lazarus was obedient. Imagine that you're in the tomb and you hear Lazarus <laughs> come forth. I'm not supposed to come out of the grave. I'm dead. And I see people in my role in ministry, I see students who have daunting tuition bills to pay, that have their, their one parents in prison and the other one strung out on drugs. And yet God says to them, come forth, I've got something That's more for important. you to do. You and life. you have to decide that you're going to do mm -hmm. that, that you're going to be obedient, that, that he who was faithful to begin a good work in you is going, also going to be faithful to complete it. Even though things aren't looking so good right now, he's calling you to more. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.